when you understand the things of god then you begin to see a lot of profit when you understand the word what it means to you as a believer and to a church in general you begin to benefit when you don't know you perish from the written word we can know what is putting fast uh, this is a special day for us because it's the last day of the year praise God we have reached the last day of the year Give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. As you come to the end of the year, there are very important things that you need to look at. But there's one most important thing. Most important thing is the faithfulness of God is the faithfulness of God very important you see the faithfulness of God is his steadfastness steadfastness is reliability is constancy is unchanging nature one of the things that is a mystery the greatest mystery the greatest is the eternity of god eternity it's the highest mystery is always there He has no beginning, he has no ending. And so this morning, I want to share with you a message entitled, The Faithfulness of God is Our Security. 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 Our safety, our well being really depends on the faithfulness of God. Praise God. God is constant, He is a constant factor. And, and that is what makes Him our security every other thing is changing culture changes the world changes even when you build a new house with the time it changes when you buy a new car with the time it changes even you yourself your body changes That's why we have to have wisdom. Very, very important for us to have wisdom. Very important. Some people, when they're young, they're reckless with life. They're reckless with life and they don't realize that they will change. They ignore God. They ignore advices. They look at their youthfulness as 
their strength. And in fact, there are many young people who even have the notion in their mind that they will not die. Death is very far from them. And that's why some of them ride motorcycles the way they ride. They drive the way they drive. They take things that destroy their body without realizing that that body, though it looks like it is strong, it will change. It can break down. So everything changes. People change. And so you cannot depend on them. You cannot depend on a changing world. You should depend on the unchanging God. The faithful God. Because with him is ever there. It does not change. He's never absent. When you need him, you can find him. When you call to him, you can find him. That's why it is very important for you to have a connection with him through Christ. And as we look at whatever message we look at, at the back of your mind, know that there's a kingdom, there's a government of God. There are two kingdoms. There's a kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. The kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan, they're there. You see them every day in action. But the kingdom of God rules over everything. Keep that in your mind. Because at the back of your mind, whatever goes on in your life, whatever you come on your way, whatever you meet in life, let the backdrop be the fact that the kingdom of God rules over everything. Have that background. Because life is like a stage with a background and then actions in front of the stage. But at the background, keep in mind that there is a kingdom. God's kingdom rules over everything. Praise God. Psalms 103, verse uh, 19. You see, the kingdom is the big picture. I don't want any of you to miss the big picture. Keep the big picture. All the other things that we do, all the other, what they call the gospel, those are agendas of the kingdom, which we should believe. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. His kingdom rules over has it left out your money? Has it left out your business? Has it left out your children? His kingdom rules over that all include the devil. He can, he can stop the devil for you. He can stop the devil for you. He can stop the wicked for you. He has the final say. Praise God. I don't know what people are telling you. I don't know what you are telling yourself, but God has the final say. Amen. So we are looking at the faithfulness of God. The faithfulness of God is our security. It is his faithfulness, his reliability, his constancy that is our security. That makes us secure in this world. Because everything is changing. Every other thing is changing. There are even people who are trying to, to see how they can in, in the, interfere. They call it geoengineering. How they can even interfere with the earth. The way the earth works. The cover over the earth in order to try to to change the weather or to mitigate the climate change. I mean, it's a very risky thing to do. But when people have money, they try to do. They think it is everything. So they want to change things. 
they try many things. Now let's look at Psalms 90 verse number 2. When you look at this Psalms chapter 90 verse 2, it's just telling us about the eternity of God. The eternity of God, I said, is the, one of, is the highest mystery. Is the highest mystery. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You just look at that. You know, mountains are born. And at one point, the earth, up to now, the center of the earth is very hot. Sometimes it blows out through volcanoes and creates a new mountain. <laughs> so that's how they are born. All these mountains were born. God created them. Before the mountains were born. So earth and the world has a beginning. So anything that has a beginning has an end. Because even the Bible talks of a new heaven and a new earth. So time will come when this old earth will pass away. And the entire universe will be rolled away like a garment. That's what the Bible says. Hmm? The earth and the world. By the way, the earth and the world, the two, those are two different things. The earth is the planet, this physical planet. Yeah. The world is the human population and every other thing. The nations, whatever, name them, the businesses, the systems. That's the world. And also, strictly speaking, the world are a system of things that does not submit to the lordship of God. Doesn't submit to the lordship of Jesus. That's why they, they say, ah, this is of the world. They don't submit to the lordship of Jesus. So with you, you are in the kingdom. You submit to the lordship of Jesus. You don't need to copy the world. Because you have your own culture. You have your own laws. The word of God is your law. It instructs you. And the road, the door into that kingdom is Jesus. The kingdom of God. The door is a kingdom. Into the kingdom of God is Jesus. And the kingdom has agendas. That agenda is called the gospel. But there are so many things. They are good. It's good. Is good. You don't only pick a part of the agenda and say this is all. No. It's a full agenda which covers every area of life. That's why we come and learn. That's why we read the Bible. That's why it's important to listen to teachings. Hmm? So from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. He has always been God and always will be. Praise God. Your security is there is constant. He doesn't run away. There's a lady who was living with an uncle and then the, the auntie came that is the sister of the man, the uncle, came to visit. But she was a witch doctor. And this lady was born again, living with the uncle. And very prayerful. So when the visitor came in early in the morning after the second day, she got her gadgets to summon her spirits. Those things that they shake, the shakers. They call their gods to come. But that morning, the gods refused to report. <laughs> then the lady said, but this young lady here staying here is the one that has failed my, my spirit from coming. You see? So some of those gods run away. But your God is always there. <laughs> Malachi chapter 3 verse number 6. I the Lord do not change. So you all descendants of Jacob are not destroyed. You see, you see the security of, of people really. is on his unchanging nature. He told his people, the Israelites, say, look, if I was like a human being, I would have finished you long ago. I would have destroyed you because you make me so angry. You disobey me. You do terrible things. I would have finished you. But the fact that my, my, my love doesn't fail, I don't change like a man. 
I don't say one thing and then in the next moment, moment I change. No, I don't. That's what he was telling them. You see, his unchanging nature is our security. Praise God. His faithfulness, he remains loyal to his word. Loyal to his promises. You can depend on him. And when he says, if you repent, you turn away, you walk away from your sin, I will forgive you. He means it. He means it. That's why you need to believe his word. And that's why faith pleases him. Faith is being sure that what he promises, he can do it for you. So as you come to the end of the year, in a changing world with a lot of uncertainties for many. For you, there should be no uncertainties because his promises are there. His promises are there. Praise God. Let's look at Lamentation chapter 3 verse 21 to 23. God's word translation. God's word translation. It brings it out. That one shows you really that his faithfulness is our security. It's not the gun you carry that is your security. It's not the money you have that is your security. Lamentation 3.21 to 23. The reason I can still find hope is that I keep this one thing in mind. The Lord's mercy. We are not completely wiped out. His compassion is never limited. It's new every morning. His faithfulness is great. You just look at that. Look at that. Clap to the Lord. <laughs> now, <laughs> Jeremiah was lamenting about the people the suffering that was there in the nation at that time. There was a lot of wickedness which made judgment fall on Israel, Judah, the kingdom of Judah. But Jeremiah said it. He said, the reason I can still find hope is that this one thing is mercy. His mercy endures. I can still find his mercy because he cannot change. <laughs> he will show me mercy. He cannot change. You look at what is going on in the Middle East. That war. Look at that war between Israel and the Philistines. Philistinians. If you try to depend on your wisdom, you fail. You fail. This man says, the reason I can still find hope, otherwise the situation was hopeless. The situation was bad, but he had hope in the Lord's mercy. He said, because God is faithful. He's steadfast. He's true. He's faithful. They cannot be wiped out. Otherwise, they would have, they would have been swept away. They would have been swept away. Hmm? So a lot has happened, but we are not yet finished. Praise God. I want to tell you, thank God that you are still alive. Your story is not yet over. Amen. Your story is not yet over. Amen. His compassion is never limited. Kind-heartedness, that is his kind-heartedness, is never limited. It's new every morning. His faithfulness is great. It's great. Is constant from everlasting to everlasting is God. 
you will always find him. If you are ready, you will always find him. There's a man who escaped from being killed by a certain man. He took over the wife, of the, the, the man, the man had gone for a course. He took over the wife completely. The woman deceived him that he has broken off from the husband. But the man knew everything and even where they were living. Then the man returned abruptly and found the man in the house and said, you, you have a, a, a wonderful daughter, a, young, a little daughter and a wife. Why are you why are you doing this? I would have killed you. I would have messed you up 20, I know 20 ways of destroying you. More than 20 ways of destroying you. But I've chosen not to destroy you. Because when I went out, I found Jesus. I found Jesus. <laughs> I found Jesus. So because of him, I cannot mess up myself. I've decided to spare you. And the man told him that, so you found Jesus and that's why you spared me? And the man said, If you want him, I can help you find him. And the man said, it's okay, I know where to find him. And he went. <laughs> and indeed, he called his wife, that whom he has already abandoned, that I'm coming back home. He said, really, you are coming back home? Is it for real? He said, yeah. And <laughs> he had abandoned them for a long time. A man with a good job. <laughs> But the wife was also praying the faithfulness of God. He's a faithful God. You will always find him. Praise God. You will always find him. When you cry out, you find him and he'll answer you. Just remain trusting. Because he does what he says he will do. Let me tell you, sometimes uh, God allows people to to reach at the bottom of the drum and scrap the bottom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when they have scrapped the bottom and tested it, is when they can say, no, let me go back like the, the, the other son, mm -hmm. the prodigal son. When he was, he, he, he was wishing he could eat with the pigs and no one gave him the food. He ran back to the father. And the father welcomed him. And Jesus said, that is how God is. He's faithful. He's faithful. As we end the year, if you don't look at the faithfulness of God, the things going on in the world can worry you. The things you see in the, the news, in the TV, on the TV, and you read in the newspaper, may worry you. The things you get in the net may worry you. You will find a lot of uncertainties. But let me tell you, there is a God. There is a God who created the universe. There is a God who created the very people the devil wants to use to mess up the world. There is a God. Tell your neighbor there is a God. Now, look at Psalms 102, verse 25 to 28. Long ago, you laid the foundation of the earth and made the heavens with your hands. They will perish but you remain forever. They will wear out like all clothings. You will change them like a garment and discard them. But you are always the same. You will live forever. The children of your people will live in security. Their children's children will thrive in your presence. Just look at this passage. Long ago you laid the foundation of the earth and made the heavens with your hands. He created his outside creation. God is not a created being. He's outside creation. That's why he's able to rule what he has created. 
That's why you should not live in fear. That's why you should trust him. His security is in you. Whatever else is how is, is he created, when you are in him, will not hurt you. Will not mess you up. You will overcome. Praise God. We are told that even the heavens which he made, hmm, they will perish. Hmm? They will perish. But God will remain forever. They will wear out like all clothings. And indeed the universe wears out. By the way, they say that the sun is burning away tons of its mass. Burning it away. And it is coming here as light. A lot of huge balls of fire leaps out of the sun. A lot of mass is burnt out of the sun every second. Meaning, actually, slowly the sun is dying. Though it is a gigantic thing. Though the reaction in the sun is nuclei. Fusion, not fusion. Fusion. The atoms break. They break down. They break down and, and release enormous energy. Enormous. They break down. The other atomic bomb, it is fusion. The atoms are brought together to release energy. But this one of the sun. So they are burning out. The galaxies there are so many stars, billions. In one galaxy, you find billions. New ones are being created when the black holes collide and burst. New stars are created. Others are dying. So they wear out. The entire universe, time will reach when it will wear out. Because it is also mysterious. The more telescope, powerful telescopes they discover, the more new things the scientists find. But we are told they will perish, but you remain forever. So your God remains forever. You will change them like a garment and discard them. That's why he's going to give you a new earth and a new heaven. He'll change them. He'll change them. But you are always the same. You know, God is always the same. What he says remains the same. It doesn't change. Numbers 23 verse number 19. God is not a man that he should lie. No a son of man that he should change his mind. Hmm? Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? You see? God is not a man that he should lie. It doesn't change. Do you know why people lie? When they are lying, they have changed something. So, God does not change. Does not change. That's why in the church, you cannot bring new things that is contrary to the word. You cannot. Because he has already put his word and given it to us. It is written in the Bible. You cannot change. You cannot change things. You cannot even teach and bring. You cannot modernize God. And actually, I don't know. It is it's about vanity. The world thinks they can modernize things. They can even modernize Christianity. They can even modernize the faith. You cannot change faith. Faith hinges on Christ. The eternal word of God. You cannot, you cannot say, now, let's, let's modernize our faith. Let's modernize the church. You can never modernize the devil. He's the same old devil. Sin is the same old sin. Sin is the same old... The, I'm telling you, because... <laughs> The old devil is still there. And that's why God sent a savior. You can never say you, you change the teaching of the church. You can never. You know on the 18th, 
of December, something very terrible happened. Some of you, you may, you may have read it in the news, you may have seen it in the social media. A document called uh, Fiducia Supplicants. Uh, I don't know whether some of you people heard about that document. Fiducia, I think it is Latin. Supplicants. is a blasphemous document that Pope Francis released uh, in which he directed the Catholic priests to bless same-sex couple, to bless the homosexual. They come as a couple and the document says, no, but you can bless them as individual. They come, remember, they come as a couple. They have been in one home, sleeping in one bed. They come as a couple. You bless them as individual. They leave the, your presence as a couple. You bless them. They are trying to change. And that's why some Catholic bishops have rebelled against it. They, they cannot implement it. Eh? Especially in the, the southern part of the world. They have refused. Hmm? And one, the, there's one called Bishop Anwell Mutumbuka in, in uh, Malawi. The man, I concur with him. He says, no, this, this document is blasphemous. We are not going to accept it. Pope never died for the church. It is Jesus who died for the church. They are not going to accept it. You see? So, what are they trying to do? They are trying to change things. They are trying to modernize faith. You cannot change sin and make it. You cannot bless sin. You cannot. Because you, you, you are trying to make God a liar. God cannot say homosexuality is sin. I have given you the grace to come out of it. My son has the grace, can give you the help. The grace to save sinners is available. Praise God. In Titus we are told, very clearly, that the grace of God has appeared to all men that teaches them to say no to ungodliness. There's grace available that will, can save an homosexual and allow him to live that lifestyle. It is there. And that's why the Catholic bishops have opposed this. And apparently this document is not really speaking for Catholics. It is written to please homosexuals. You can imagine that. And uh, this other bishop of uh, Malawi, uh, Anwell Mutumbuka, he said this is a sacrilegious document. It has scandalized the Catholic Church. He has put us to shame. And he apologized on behalf of the Catholics. That pray, just pray for the Pope. Pray for the Pope. He said Peter even made the same mistake. They, they called Peter that is the first Pope. He denied Jesus three times. So it is not... Hmm, hmm, hmm. It is possible for a Pope to mess. So... The, it is, it is possible. Peter erred, and so Pope Francis has also erred. They should pray for him. <laughs> so, but you are always the same. So, God cannot change his word. The world is always constantly changing, but our God doesn't change. Our faith in Christ does not change. We cannot begin to believe otherwise. Because we believe the word. Our faith is in what God says. It's in Christ. He came to save us. They are trying to make Christ irrelevant. Christ came to save homosexuals. Murderers. Liars. Everybody. Every sin. Why do some people want to, to remove themselves away that we are unsavable? Huh? We homosexuals, we cannot be saved. No. You can be saved. You can be saved. Just like a thief can be saved. Just like an angry man with full of anger can be saved and begins to have peace in his heart. So they should not lie. Don't listen to the lie that you can stay the way you are. Don't. You can come out of that lifestyle of homosexuality which is a deadly lifestyle type when it comes to, to health. Deadly. Deadly lifestyle. Hmm? You cannot practice that lifestyle for a year. 
and your health remains the same. Something that knocks away 25 years from your life, 25 to 30 years. Once you engage in it as a young person, whether you're a woman, whether you're a man, 25 years knocked off. If you're supposed to live up to 80 years, remove 25. That is too much. 25 years, Ariad, you can do a lot. <laughs> you live forever. But look at the beauty of verse 28. The children of your people will live in security. Their children's children will thrive in your presence. As they are trying to change things, I want to tell you, remain in the Lord. Put your, remain there. Teach your children the way of the Lord. They will be secure. I said they will be secure. In this world that looks like it is insecure, they, your children will be secure. Security is in his presence. Why? Because he is available. He lives forever. He does not die. He rules the entire universe. Give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. Now lift up your hands and pray. Even those who are online, please pray and ask the Lord. The eternal God. Ask him to protect you. Ask him. Affirm your faith in him. Tell him you have decided to believe in him. Ask Jesus to come into your heart and be your Lord and say, do it right now if you don't have any relationship with God. But if already you have a relationship with God, don't let fear drive your life. Don't be uncertain. There's a secure future for you and your children. The Bible says it. There's a secure future for your nation if the leaders turn to God. There's a secure future for the world. When the church prays for the world, I just want to ask the rest of the church to pray for the Catholic church. That ESA, that ESA, that document, Fudicia, supplicants, pray for the Catholics to reject it. And it's, it's going to fail. It's going to fail. Because they are not idiots as, as, they, as the bishop said, Mutumbuka said, Bishop, that they are not idiots. They are trying to blackmail them for rejecting that thing, but they have remained steadfast. Pray for them. Pray for Uganda who rejected the same. Uganda has made it a crime to legalize homosexuality in Uganda, to practice it. It's a crime here. It's a crime. Because we have a people to protect. We have our whole culture. Let people who want to go with homosexuality continue. But they should not impose it on us. And we want to salute our president and the parla our parliament for remaining steadfast. They should not backtrack. They should not do something else. They should not. Of course, some of our people who have been bribed have gone to the constitutional court to try to see how to overturn that law. But even our judges should never be allowed to be compromised. It's about our children. It's about our future. It's about our blessing. Those people are already groping with all kind of trouble because of that. We cannot afford. It is the time for Africa to rise. We can't afford to compromise ourselves and miss what God has for us. Pray to him. Talk to him. Ask God. If you don't have a relationship with God, ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart and be your Lord and Savior. If you have done that, he has answered you. You have found him. And my prayer is let his presence fill your heart. Let his spirit dwell in you. Begin to read your Bible. Get a Bible, begin to read it from the Gospel of John. Find a church that teaches the Bible well. Join that church. If you live in the city of Kampala, you can join us at Victory Church of Christ Ministries International. Turn your back on all your sins. That is called repentance. Turn your back. Turn your back on all your sins. All manner of sins, including sexual sins, including the sins of homosexuality, allow, ask Christ to come into your heart and be your Lord and Savior. And he will truly save you. 
and give you a straight life. Father, we thank you. I commit everybody who has made that commitment and your people who are already committed. I pray, Father, in the name of you, fill them with your peace because there is hope. Because there is hope. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Fill them with your peace. Fill them with your hope. The living hope. Because Christ came to save. He came to save. We thank you for sending your son. Jesus, we thank you for saving us. We thank you for being there. We thank you for rescuing us. From all manner of wickedness. We bless your name. We give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. I am Pastor George Odui, the senior pastor of Victory Church of Christ Ministries International. I welcome you to this Eureka Kingdom time. Your solution moment. I believe with all my heart that the word of God shared in this program will deliver you, transform you, and is even able to empower you to live a loving, fruitful, and a victorious life to the glory of God. I believe that through this program, your life can never remain the same. Perhaps you have no personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You have never given him a chance to come into your life and save you and change you. The very one who gave his life for you on the cross to pay for your sins, the very one who loves you and is able to bless you, to heal you, to guide you in this life so that you can live a fruitful life, you can live victorious over the forces that fight people in life. If you know you are not really sure about a relationship with him or you have never had that opportunity, I want to invite you now. Give your life to Christ. He says in John 10, verse number 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Father has a good plan for you, our Heavenly Father. But you cannot access that plan unless you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you are ready to do that, please say this simple prayer of commitment after you and say it from the bottom of your heart. Say, Dear Jesus, I come to you as a sinner. Forgive all my sins. I repent of my sins. Right now, I invite you. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Amen. If you say that prayer from your heart, you are saved by grace through faith in Christ Jesus. Find a Bible teaching church near you where you can go and fellowship in order to grow spiritually. If you are near us here, Victory Church of Christ Ministries International, our headquarters is here in New Zealand. If you can access this place, you are most welcome for all our services. And I know your life won't remain the same. And until next time, may God abundantly bless you.